So today what we're doing is 5-4 um, and we're basically solving quadratics, all right? So before I even start, any, any, any x squared, any x squared equation is always going to have two answers, right? Any x squared equation will always have two answers, okay? So what we have to do is find both answers. So in example one, it is an x minus 3 quantity squared equals 16. I have to solve for x. Well, I'm just, this one's not that hard. I'm going to solve for x by first undoing the square. So I'm just going to take the square root of both sides. Okay. Now we have to remember though, we're always going to have two answers. The square root of 16, shh, the square root of 16 is 4, but the square root of 16 is also a negative 4. Because we know negative 4 times negative 4 is a positive 16. So we'll rewrite this. The square root cancels the square. I'll have an x minus 3 is equal to, well, the square root of 16 is 4, but we're going to say plus or minus 4. It represents two answers. It represents a positive 4 and a negative 4. We have to have both answers. We know that negative 4 times negative 4 is 16. And we also know 4 times 4 is 16, so you get both answers. Now, in order to get two answers, let's make two equations from here, okay? We do two equations. One equation is just the x minus 3 equals the 4 and the x minus 3 equals negative 4. Okay? So if I'm going to solve them the two equations, it's pretty easy. I go plus 3 plus 3. I'm going to have x equals 7. If I go plus 3 plus 3, I get x equals negative 1. Okay, if these are truly my answers, let's double check it real quick. For instance, if I throw it back into the original, 7 minus 3 is 4, 4 squared is 16. Yeah, that's got to be an answer, okay? Is that, does that make sense how I checked it? Put 7 in, 7 minus 3 is 4, 4 squared is 16. If I put negative 1, I get negative 1. Minus 3 is a negative 4, but negative 4 squared, negative times a negative, is also 16. So both answers, we got two answers, and both answers are correct, all right? Okay, example two is pretty much the same type of thing, but the first thing we're going to have to do is divide by four, divide by four, okay? So I get an x plus one quantity squared equals 36 fourths. So let's see, what is that? Um, 36 divided by four is? Maybe nine? Maybe nine? Maybe nine? Okay, now, when I take the square root of this next, we're going to get the plus or minus, okay? To undo the square, we're just going to square root it because the square and square roots are opposites. I'm going to take the square root of 9. I have to remember that the square root of 9 has two answers. So we're going to have a 3, but it's a plus or minus 3, okay? So the square cancels the square root, right? And x plus 1 equals 3 and negative 3. So if I need two answers, I better have two equations. So my two equations are going to be x plus 1 equals 3 and an x plus 1 equals a negative 3, right? And then I'm just going to solve, right? But you got the plus or minus. You have the positive 3 and you have the negative 3. So you have to have both, the positive 3 and the negative 3. Minus 1, minus 1. First answer is x equals 2. Minus 1, minus 1. x equals negative 4. Okay, that's the second answer, okay? All right. Number three. All right, let's do this one. So I'm going to go solve first. I'll go plus 4, plus 4. So I got a 3x squared equals, I think that's 72. Divide by 3, divide by 3. 72 divided by 3. Anybody have a calculator handy real quick? Is it 24? 24. Okay, so I get x squared equals 24. Okay, now here's a number that won't have a perfect square root. But that's okay, we've done square roots before. And we've broken down square roots before, okay? So if we take the square root of both sides, we're gonna get x equals plus or minus the square root of 24. The square root of 24 is not a good number. I mean, it's not a perfect, it's four point, probably nine, blah, 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 but it's not a very nice number. But what we can do is we can break it down, right? Yeah. We can break it down into, what times what makes 24? Good, and let's put the 4 in, in first and 6, but totally right. 6 and 4 is the best combination because then we can take the square root of 4, which is 2. 
Now I left it as plus or minus. It's just easier to write. I left it as plus or minus two squares of six. Or if I wanted to get fancy, I could say x equals two squares of six and x equals negative two squares of six. But that's easier to write. You agree? I mean, that says both of them. It says a positive two squared six, and it says the negative. So if I write it as plus or minus, it's just telling me both of them. But I don't have to write it again, right? Do you like that way better? That's a little easier to write. It means both of them, okay? Okay, example four. All right, now, if I tried to go minus 25, minus 25, to solve for x, it gets pretty messy. I could bring over the 27 and try and factor, but it gets kind of messy. But this one, if I could make an example four look like example one, okay? If I can make example four look like example one, then I can solve it by square rooting it, right? Well, how can I make example four look like quantity squared, like x something's quantity squared? Well, let's start by factoring. So let's factor. Because I recognize I recognize that I can make this into x and x, right? What times what makes 25? Five. Five. five and five. How about a negative? You guys okay with the negative five, negative five? And they both have to be negative five, negative five to get the negative 10, right? And now I can rewrite this as an x minus five quantity squared equals 27, right? Now we're going to do what we did before. Um, if I want to get rid of the square, I'm going to do the opposite. So I'm going to take the square root of that, right? Square root, square root, okay? So the square root cancels the square, right? X minus 5 is equal to, okay, plus or minus the square to 27. Now plus or minus, right? Because you have to have two answers. I got both, positive and negative. 27 can be broken down, right? 27 can be broken down into what? Nine. Yep, 9 and 3, which makes really 3 squared to 3, okay? So now I need two answers. So what I have is really an x minus 5 equals plus or minus 3 squared to 3. You okay with that? I just rewrote the 27 as 3 squared to 3. That's all I did is just change the 27 into 3 squared to 3. So all I did so far is just replace this square root of 27 with 3 squared to 3. Now I'm going to go plus 5 plus 5. So when I add 5, you cannot add these unless you use a calculator and get an ugly decimal answer. But this is correct. 5 plus minus 3 squared to 3. How do I get two answers out of this? This answer is what I like. Where are the two answers? The answer is fine. That's the answer I want. But where are the two answers? If you want to see, they are 5 plus 3 squared to 3. And the other answer would be 5 minus 3 squared to 3. There are my two answers. But it's so much easier to write it like this. So much easier to write it as the 5 plus minus 3 squared to 3. You guys agree with that? So I just leave it like that because it means both of those. All right. Ready to the page? Okay, completing the square. All right, so here's my reading that we had, right? So step one, move C to the other side, okay? So that's what I'm going to do. So let me go to my example, and I have example five, right? Move C to the other side. So here is A, B, C, okay? Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. So here's A, B, and C. So step C, move C to the other side. So I'm going to take the 15 and move it over here, okay? So I'm going to have a 2x squared plus an 8x equals 15. Leave a little space right there. Leave a little space because we're going to fill in that hole, okay? Step two, common factor out A. What does that mean? Well, here's my two. I'm going to common factor out. So I'm going to rewrite this as two parentheses x squared plus 
4x. And we are going to practice this a bunch because it's a little weird, but if you follow the steps, okay? So I common factored out my 2. I pulled out the 2. And then what left was x squared plus 4x. Now leave a space right here because we're going to fill this in. Leave a space right there because we're going to fill in that space. Okay, now, now it says take 1 half. It's supposed to be a 1 half. Take 1 half of b. So real quick, b over here is 4. Okay, b is the 4. It's not... It's not the 8. B is the 4. So B is 4. So it's that number right there. That is B. And it says then take half of that. So I'm going to take half of that B, and that's 2, right? So it says take half of B, then, then square that result. So I'm going to square that result, and I get 4 again. Coincidence doesn't always happen that way, but in this case it did. Now, it says add that answer to both sides. So here's what I did. I took my 4. I took half of it, and half of 4 is 2, and then I squared it. So I took 4, I took half of it was 2, and I squared it. Now, what I'm going to do is plug that in. I'm going to pop it right into this spot right here. I'm going to go plus 4 there, okay, plus 4. You guys see that? Probably not. So I put the plus 4 right there. So I fill the hole. Fill the hole. So I got this little hole right here. I fill the hole, okay? Now, in math, you got to think about an equation. You got an equal sign. In math, if you got an equal equal sign, it's equal. But all of a sudden, I just dumped in eight on this side. I just like eight piles of dirt. I dumped eight piles of dirt. See where I got the eight from? I just piled on eight piles of dirt. Is it balanced? No, it's out of balance. So if it's a balance, I just dumped in eight piles of dirt. What do I got to do the other side to keep it balanced? So I'm going to add eight to this side. So it says add that answer to both sides. I just did that. Okay. Why do we do completing the square? Well, the next step is going to show you why we do this, okay? So, 2, and I can factor this. This will factor. If you complete the square, you will always be able to factor. If you complete the square, if you do these steps correctly, you'll always be able to factor, okay? So this is like an x plus 2. x plus 2, isn't it? Multiples of 4 that add up to 4. But I can rewrite that as a 2 times an x plus 2 squared equals a 23, okay? Now, if I had to solve, I can do that. I can solve it just, and I'll flip it back. I can solve this just like we solved these, right? I can solve them just like I did this one, so now let's flip it back. So to solve, I'm going to divide by 2 first. Divide by 2, divide by 2, so I have a, I'll have to squeeze this over here. x plus 2 squared is equal to, what's that, 11.5, 11, 11 I think? Yeah, 11.5, right? How do I get rid of the square? What do I do? Square root, everybody agree? Square root, square root, square root this side, square root this side. How many answers do I have? Two. Two answers, so I'm going to have an x plus 2 equals plus or minus the square root of 11.5, which we'll leave that. We're not going to get the ugly decimal. We're just going to leave plus or minus the square root of 11.5, which is probably uh, 3 point something. Okay, 3 point blah, blah, blah. Subtract 2, subtract 2. x is equal to negative 2 plus or minus the square root of 11.5. Those are, there are two answers there. There really are. It's negative 2 plus the square root of 11.5 and negative 2 subtract the square root of 11.5. Okay, those are my two answers. Okay, now finally, let's go back to the board. Okay, if you look at the board, and I'll write this on the side, vertex form is y equals a x minus h squared plus k, right? That's the vertex form. Okay, so if this equation way over here were a vertex. If this one right here were a vertex, we say the vertex was at negative 2, 23, right? It would have been at negative 2, 23, the vertex of this thing. So all we're going to do is the same thing, except we want to get it in vertex form. Okay, well, how does that work? Okay, step one. Okay, first of all, I'm going to rewrite this as y equals a 3x squared minus a 12x minus 4, okay? Let's do the same exact steps we just did. We're going to do the steps up here, the completing the square steps, okay? So step by step. Step one, 
move C to the other side. So I'm going to take this 4, bring it over here, okay? I'm going to write as y plus 4 equals 3x squared minus 12x, okay? Step 2, common factor out there. Now, if there is no number here, you don't have to do step 2. If there's like no number here and some of the problems are that way, then you don't have to do step 2, right? But in this case, you're going to take out the 3. It will do an x squared minus 4x, right? And leave a hole, leave a space right there. Okay, so step 2 was to common factor out the 3. I did that. I took out the 3, gave me an x squared minus 4x. Okay, now... I'm going to do this b, 1 half b squared, okay? So what's, what is b? Negative 4. b is negative 4. So b is negative 4. Half of that is negative 2. And if I square that, I get positive 4, okay? All right, so all I do is take this number, take half of it, and square it. Take this number take this number, I take half of that number, and I square it. That's all I do. Now I get an answer of 4. So I'm going to plug in 4. I'm going to put a plus 4. Use a different color here. Plus 4 here, right? And I'm going to put a plus 12 here. Now where did this 12 come from? So that's 3 times the 4, isn't it? So when I just stick the 4 in here, what I've really stuck in here is 3 times 4, which is 12. So again, I've got the equations out of balance. It just dumped 12 piles of dirt on this side of the scale. I better put in 12 piles of dirt on this scale to keep it balanced, right? Now let's simplify this. Y plus 16 equals 3. And I can factor this, right? X minus 2 squared, because it's X minus 2, X minus 2. You all right that? I kind of skipped a step, but you're smart. I just factor that. What are the multiples of 4 that add up to negative 4? Negative 2, negative 2, right? So if I bring the 16 back over, I get a y equals a 3 times an x minus 2 squared minus 16. So now my vertex, I know exactly where my vertex is. My vertex in this problem is at 2, negative 16. It is at 2, negative 16. Okay, that's... All I have, let me push and a recording.